Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Beef Brody and today we're going to install some solar panels on our solar prepped Jayco Eagle HT. I'm going to mount these to the roof in sort of an unconventional way that I think is far more practical and it's a small tip that I learned in some other random YouTube video and I, I, I think it's a good thing to do. So we're going to explore that. We're going to see what it takes to wire in the solar controller on something that says it's solar prepped. We're going to be testing it. I'll give you some tips and tricks and some of my thoughts and opinions along the way. It's getting hot out here. So let's get to it. For my RV, I decided to use the Go Power Overlander kit, which includes a 190 watt panel, Bluetooth solar controller, mounting brackets, and some wiring. I also got the Overlander expansion kit, which is just another 190 watt panel, mounting brackets, and the electrical adapter to wire these two together. So let's start with talking about how these panels are intended to be installed. They come with this little bracket right here that's supposed to screw to the bottom of this panel and then you screw this bracket down to the roof which i'm sure works great until you need to change something about the configuration maybe you need to add panels move the configuration you need to replace the panels etc the problem i have with this is that when you screw the bracket to this uh, you're forced to kind of be up underneath this panel to remove it or unscrew it from the roof. And as you can imagine, you only have an inch of clearance between the roof and this to be able to get wrenches in here and loosen this thing up and get it off of the bracket, which isn't terribly practical. And you don't want to have to unscrew this bracket from the roof because you're going to have sealant all over it. It's going to leave you with holes in your roof that you have to figure out how to reseal, etc. I don't like this method. So this is what we're going to do in replacement of this. I went out and bought these strut channels. Now this is something I got at Home Depot in the electrical department. And you can see it's just a channel here. This is 10 feet long, which gives us a lot of length. And I've measured the roof to make sure that we have space for that. And then this is a Simpson hanger that you find in the framing department. So what I'm gonna do is screw this to the bottom of our solar panel and it's gonna stick off of the edge just like this. And then I'll be able to bolt it down through into this channel with these sort of nuts that slide down in the channel and can be added and removed. And what I like about this is that it gives me a, the ability to put one set of holes in the roof and then have these channels or these tracks where I can add accessories, take things away. And it's just as simple as taking these nuts and moving them around, taking them in and out. Um, I can reconfigure the panels in a different orientation if I wanna add more in the future. I can put bigger solar panels on later. I can put smaller solar panels on later. And all I have to do is change the way they mount to the tracks. And then the tracks are always there. All this stuff is galvanized, so it's not gonna rust. I'm not concerned about anything like that. So I think this is a much better method. So we'll just screw these down. We'll seal the top of them with the correct sealant. Now, if I did all my measurements correctly, which I think I did, <laughs> this should go super smooth and be very easy. So let's head up to the roof and get started. Now, before you go screwing things together, make sure you make measurements on your roof so you know how much space you have to play with while keeping in mind areas to walk around the panels, obstructions like vents, AC units, etc. Then mock it up on the ground and make sure it's all gonna work within the dimensions before you go screwing everything together. Once I had all my dimensions confirmed, I started screwing the Simpson hangers to the frame of the solar panel with these short self-drilling sheet metal screws. One down, seven to go. So as I'm laying this out, I know because I mocked it up on the ground down there that the middle of the solar panels and all these dimensions put um, all the, I wanna be able to channel all the wiring through right here in the middle. So I'm marking five feet and allowing enough room for the wiring to come through and come into the, the connectors here. So I'm just positioning that and then I'm gonna square it up here, make sure it's in line with the roof and nice and square make a few just little dots on the roof with this Sharpie just because this thing moves around a lot. And then we'll start screwing it down and then we'll measure off of this one and place the second one. 
Now that the channels are measured out and in place, I can get ready to screw them to the roof. I'm using the Dicor self-leveling lap sealant, short lag bolts, lock washers, and a fender washer because the holes in the channel are pretty big. When it comes to actually screwing these down, start with a smaller pilot hole, add some sealant, then screw the lag bolt and repeat about every 24 inches or so down the channel. Don't forget to go back and seal up the tops of these when you're done, then repeat this process on the next channel. My goodness, it's getting hot up here. Okay, now that the messy part is done, the tracks are laid down, screwed down, sealed up. This is actually kind of a cool, happy accident. Let me show you what happened. Is that this rail here, the track, ended up almost exactly in the middle of the roof. You can see the AC unit here, which is cool, because if I want to do something on that side, I can sort of do equal distance and mount things over here as well. Let me get these solar panels laid down. They should bolt on in like five minutes. I'll make sure that I have the wiring sort of on the middle, you know, on either end of the panels. And then we'll go down, we'll hook up the solar controller. I'm not going to plug in the panels up here yet because they will start sending power down to the wiring immediately. So we'll do that. We'll hook up the solar controller and then we'll hook up the wiring and test it. Now, when you're moving these panels around, you want to make sure that you don't accidentally let one of these brackets or anything rough hit this rubber membrane on the top of the roof and tear it. That will be a bad day. Lay those in there very gently. Just like this. Beautiful. So now all we have to do is insert these nuts. And again, these just sort of drop in and twist. And then you will slide it under here. Make up our little bolts with the washers. Put those in. We'll move on to the others. With both of the channels and the solar panels now mounted to the roof, I got to work on the solar controller. Now in my Eagle HT, the wiring is pre-installed and run into the pass-through storage next to the water bay. After removing a few of these access panels, the wiring was a complete mess, but at least it was wide open. Now coming from the custom car industry, this wiring makes me twitch, but I'm sure here in the future I'll be cleaning this up. But for now, I just need these couple of wires that go to the solar controller, and I think I'm gonna mount that right about here. All right, so this is interesting. As I started to take those measurements inside of the storage there to figure out where I wanted the controller to be and how it was gonna play with all the wiring, I went to go transfer some of those measurements to this panel. Now there's a decal here that says this is pre-wired for solar, blah, blah, blah. But then on the back of this, there's already some blocking and it was only about a half inch off from where I measured, and I measured pretty conservatively. So I think all I'm gonna have to do now, instead of using those measurements, I'm going to take advantage of the blocking that's here. So when I screw this from the backside, I'm screwing into these on these, at least on the top and one side, so it's nice and secure. So I'm just gonna lay this guy here. So I'll make these marks and then I'll cut this opening and I'll be able to leverage that stuff and get this thing wired up in the next few minutes and be rocking and rolling.
With the hole cut in the panel, I fished the wires through, screwed it back in, and started hooking up the wiring to the back of the controller. Now, this was really simple as the factory installed wiring was pre-labeled, so I just trimmed them to length and tightened them into the back of the solar controller. Battery positive and negative, and solar panel positive and negative. It's about as easy as it gets. Now I can go back up to the roof and plug in the panels to the factory wiring location. I hope those install tips were helpful for you. This was not meant to be a review of any sort, but I have been here in Daytona at the International Speedway for the last Oh, five days or so, boondocking off the grid and using the whole setup. Now, if you've already done your research and you were just looking up how to install your panels and you're good to go, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're still researching whether or not you want to do solar, what's the right setup? Is this going to work for what I want to do? I'm going to answer that now and I will try to make it quick. So on top of the two solar panels that I have, I also have three Group 24 batteries mounted up front. Uh, they give me a total of 300 amp hours. Now, technically you're not supposed to deplete these batteries more than 50% or you start to damage them long-term. So you've got to be able to monitor that. And that is where I think the Go Power solar controller sort of falls short uh, in a couple areas. One, it's sort of limited in the information that it gives you. It gives you uh, voltage, it gives you amperage, which is okay, except for everything else measures electricity in watts, most of the things that you're using in any ways, right? Because you've got uh, your solar panels, for example, are measured in watts. You've got a power inverter that's measured in watts. So to have your solar controller only measure amperage is kind of lame. Uh, now you can do the mathematical equation, volt times amps equals watts. So 12 volts at 10 amps is 120 watts, for example. Now these panels were pulling about 190 watts at about noon one day with a little bit of cloud coverage. Uh, so that's about half the capacity that they sort of advertise considering I have two of them. I don't know if that's good or bad to be completely honest and I haven't done my research on that, but that's what they were pulling. And it was actually enough. I managed, I worked these things out one day and I dropped the battery percentage to about 50% measuring it with a Victron Energy shunt. Now a shunt, if you install it properly, measures the amount of power going in and out of the battery, everything, everything that's going in and out, and it will properly measure your battery capacity versus using just pure voltage to say, hmm, it's 12.0 or 11.9 volts, it must be this capacity. It's actually measuring how much power is going in and out, and it knows the capacity of the battery. So keep that in mind as well. Anyways, I was able to really work these things into about 8 p.m. And that's getting up each morning and using the coffee maker, using the toaster, uh, watching TV, plugging in the laptop, camera batteries, all that kind of stuff, uh, the microwave, et cetera. And I've had zero issues with battery capacity. Most of the time, the last several days, it's only gone to about 70%. And then I'm using a generator at night to sort of supplement and be able to run the AC. Because I'm using a Renogy 3000 watt power inverter for everything else during the day, it is not enough to power the AC, so keep that in mind. You will have to run a generator if you don't have enough power in an inverter for your AC. But with a couple of solar panels and a few batteries, it's not enough to run your AC in general. So, so again, I'm using that generator at night to run the AC. It's also charging those batteries back up. So first thing in the morning, I'm starting with full charge and then sort of starting that process all over again. So anyways, take that for whatever it's worth. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.